I'm in Backup Exec 21, and I'm going to use the disaster recovery disk that I created in a previous video in this playlist, and I'm going to restore the server called DC1. So my Backup Exec server is File Server 1, and the server I'm going to restore is DC1. So I double click on DC1, I go to the full backup, I can see I got a successful full backup that I can use to do this restore. Now if you've also done incremental backups since the last full, you'll have to restore from those as well or a differential backup. Now if you've done a synthetic backup which combines all the incremental backups into one and gives you the most up-to-date image, then you should use that. But in my case, I just have the one full, so all I need to do is to restore from this one. Now I've also done this through Hyper-V. So I've created a new Hyper-V server called DC1 Copy. And I want to show you how I set it up before we get started. I gave it the same amount of memory, and I gave it the same size hard drive. Now, you can check the size of the hard drive by clicking on Inspect, and you can see that the maximum size is 50 gigabytes, which is what DC1 said on the original server. So that's how I knew I had the right size. And I'm also using the Backup Exec 21 DSR, Disaster Server Recovery Disk ISO, to boot off of. So once I have that all set up and I've got my network adapter connected to the network, I can start up my new virtual machine. Now it doesn't matter whether you're using virtual or physical to do the restore using the DSR. At this point, it's going to be all the same. Up to this point, you've got to set up the virtual machine as I just did. When prompted, make sure you press a key to boot off the DVD, otherwise it will just give you an error that there's no bootable drive. And now we're going to see it's going to boot off a special mini operating system that's built into the DSR ISO, and it's going to load drivers, and then it's going to connect into our file server 1, which is running backup exec, and where the backup resides. I'll agree to the software license agreement, and now I'll choose to recover this computer. So if I were to take away, say, a USB drive and plug it into this server, then I could choose that the device was locally attached, but it's not. It's on file server 1. So I'll click on the data is attached to a remote backup server. So it's starting up the network services, and it's going to grab an IP address from DHCP, although you will have an option to set a static IP if you'd like. I'm going to put in the name of the server, which is file server 1, and the domain which is my Active Directory domain, and the username and password. And here I can configure my adapter settings if I'd like to set up a static IP address. I can type that information in here. I'm just going to stick with my DHCP. And also, if it's a physical server, I can choose to load the network adapter drivers as well. In my case, it found the virtual one, so I don't have to do that. It found my backup exec server, and it's given me the option for which server I would like to restore. Now, it's seen only two servers that have complete full backups. So I'm just going to choose my DC1, and it tells me the date that it was backed up. So if I have more than one full backup, I can choose which full backup I want. I can also choose to recover everything, or I can uncheck specific ones and not choose to back up, say, the C drive, for instance, which, of course, in this case would not make sense. I'll click Next. It says that I have selected to recover a Windows 2019 server. I can choose to reconfigure storage pools and storage spaces or remove them if I want. Otherwise, I'll click Next. Now, I'll also need to click on Advanced Disk Configuration because my original server was a GPT format. So I needed to convert that to GPT, which I just did. Save. And now I can click Next. Now I can click Recover. And it's initializing the recovery process. So this is going to take a little while, depending on the size and the speed of your servers. And when it's all done, we should be able to boot up into our new server. Now make sure that if your original server is still up, that that server is disconnected from the network. Otherwise, you have a problem with two servers with the same name. Now we can see the data is being restored, and we can get an idea of how many bytes and the directories that it's going to be working on. And now we can see some actual data being copied. And once the hardware discovery is done and the backup data has all been restored, 
we should be able to shut this down, restart, and get into our virtual machine if you're using Hyper-V or into your physical machine. I've completed booting into Windows after the restore. And we can see that it is certainly DC1, followed by the name of the Active Directory domain. So we can restore using the disaster recovery disk. But what if you don't have a disaster recovery disk? Well, you can create one after the fact. You can just go in and follow the procedure from the video to create the DSR and boot off of that disk, whether it's virtual or physical server, and then follow the same procedures. But what if you are unable to make the disaster recovery disk for some reason? Well, if for some reason you can't, then just go ahead and install Windows normally and rename the server, the name of the old server, as well as the same IP address, and then boot into safe mode with networking. And then from the backup exec server, you should be able to restore all of the data, even Active Directory if you need to, and then you'll be able to get right back in again. So that's how you restore a backup exec backup to a server that's had a disaster in backup exec 21, as well as older versions.